How's that red dot? Is it, is it beeping? It's happening. I love that dress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a conical dress. It's actually known as an A-line dress. Really? Yes. All right, so is this, is this bolognese? Like, cause it's, this one's got mushrooms in it and there's no meat. So maybe this is actually just a pasta dish. Yes, I think you're right. How about that celery? Ooh, they mm -hmm. lump celery and carrots together in one here. I feel like this is not a, uh, not that impressive of a... Of Bolognese? A, oh, well, just more of the art. Although I like the bay leaves. Oh, no. The bay leaves are good. Yeah, that Parmesan does not look like Parmesan. The onion's good. I'm it's okay not, with the mushroom. Not, it's not peeled. The and mushrooms, the onion. The mushrooms look great. The mushrooms look great. I don't care for the meat under it. <laughs> like the block of, <laughs> this is, they did ground beef for this one. One pound of ground beef. Nope, you're right. All right, so the big wins here once everybody gets in. Celery. The mushrooms. Celery and carrots. I think the bay leaves are dynamite. The Dutch onion. Oven, the Dutch oven is actually pretty good. The uh, butter is pretty good because it's a block. The Dutch oven is not a good drawing, but everybody knows what it is. It's like very identifying because I didn't actually know what a Dutch oven was. And this one doesn't give you a Dutch oven, but all the rest of the drawings in here are really good. Well. I don't know, that minced meat. I guess, if, I mean, what would you think? I would think that was like dog food. If I didn't have the label. If it didn't have like the label, I do like this, I do like this plate of pasta, I have to admit. The well, now, now the, um, I see that's pasta basil. And dog food. That's basil on the top. That's not bay leaf. Do they include bay leaves in the ingredients? I don't think they include bay leaves in this one. That's what's so know, interesting Trevor... about these. It's what's so interesting about these different recipes. This one has got dry white wine. Like that didn't mention the other ones. They sell, they separate the celery and the carrots. The celery and carrots are way better in this one. All the vegetables are better in this. Yeah, and they went with actually drawing peppercorns for the salt and pepper. I would make the sea salt Himalayan. I would definitely make it pink. Tomatoes are great. Onion is great, peeled and unpeeled, although I would use not a purple onion in the cooking that is. And then the, the spaghetti, the uncooked spaghetti is freaking fantastic so why would you not use a purple onion in this dish i just like i like uh i like the i like at mom's they've got white onions that are just so 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 good i just prefer the it's not that i don't like purple onions i just really like the white ones So now all I see is a plate of pasta with dog food and- uh, Did I really do that to you? Did I really do that to you? And I yeah. am, the, the, cream, the, the, glass, the glass pitcher of milk is really good. Did they even use cream in the description on the other side? I don't recall they're doing so. Cup of red wine, cup of- Three quarters cup of chicken cream, stuff. and then three quarters. Three quarters cup, cup of cream. What's one pound of tagliatelle? Tagliatelle. What's tagliatelle? Tagliatelle. What is that? Hey Siri, what is tagliatelle? 
<laughs> Tagliatelle are a traditional type of pasta from the Emilia Romagna and Marche regions of Italy. It's that, a pasta, and, and the B is not that, pronounced. That's a spaghetti. Tagliatelle. Yeah, Tagliatelle. The G is silent. It's lovely. I didn't get that. Could you try again? No. Um, all right, Jack. What is that supposed to be on, on the bottom right? Jack, are you still here, by the way? Cheese? Yeah, that's the Parmesan cheese. That's that's pitiful. Yes, I am here. Okay, do you want to see? I, I don't, I, I mean, you might be the only one today, or at least for the more, for the beginning session. Aww. Do you want to start drawing? Sure. Yeah, I'm like ready. It's 115. Okay, cool. Um, so we're doing we're doing the bolognese, which is just a traditional, um, like kind of a heavy, okay. heavy, meaty, creamy Italian dish uh, from Bologna. Bologna is in the Veneto, so it's like northern Italy. Um, it's a city I've visited. Um, I spent more time in Padua and Vicenza um, and Venice, obviously, and Florence. I've spent way more time in those cities, but um, I've been studying these um, Bolognese. Uh, uh, Renaissance artists, um, and they have like kind of a, a unique style, and they're kind of like no one really, yeah. You know, it's all the Florentine and the Roman painters that everybody um, and the Venetians, and the and the Bologna gets overlooked, even though it's like a really cool city. Um, anyway, so I was I was started doing some research into the city. And then I realized that this is like this traditional dish that they make. And I started, and so these images came up as I was studying the artists and I was like, well, that would be a great lesson for today. And then I found, this is like just spaghetti and meatballs, I guess. But then this one, let's see, where's the color going? I keep going back to my dogs. Um, yeah. Let's, should we sketch some ingredients first? The plan was to sketch some ingredients and then sketch the plate. Hmm. So let's do it. All right, let me move this. Oh, yeah. All right, Stacy, are you ready? Are you ready to, to rock this? I am ready. Party? Absolutely. All right. And uh, Trevor, are you, use, you using uh, graphite color or something else? Um, I'm just going to use my graphite, if you don't mind. Um, the reason yeah, I think that's perfect. The reason is because this group, um, this group really only has pencils. Like they're not like a lot of the guys are not in you know like a legitimate art room where they have access to kind mm -hmm. of <clears throat> um, Okay. So let's do it. Um, I'm gonna start with the um, with the just get through uh, like bang out these veggies, um, and the onion itself is actually really fun because it's a semicircle. So it's like it's the onion that's chopped exactly in half. Um, all right, so Stace, let's do this. So I'm gonna like find kind of yes. the, the bottom of the onion, and then where there's like the little root system that's kind of beginning. Um, from that little root system, I'm going to angle up and find the middle of the um, onion. And there's the, you know how they talk about like, you know, peeling an onion, like go peeling off the layers to get to like the truth, get to the, get to the center. Um, you can start from that center and actually build the layers, the thickness of those layers out which is kind of an interesting approach actually, um, which I had not planned on doing. Um, it is a circle. Um, so, you know, the, the shape of the onion seen from uh, like the slice will be um, a circle seen slightly from the side um, with a triangular cap, like a little, like this is the, out of this section, I don't know if you've seen when onions like stay too long, um, the green section will actually grow out of here. And you can still, you know, you can still eat those onions. Um, so that's the center of the onion, the part that's been sliced and is exposed and then uh, hasn't been peeled yet. 
and it's easier to peel after you have sliced it actually. So I'm gonna do the part of the outside onion skin. And obviously if it was purple, I'd make it purple. I'm gonna darken the very top. It's gonna to get lighter in the middle. I'm gonna darken the very bottom. So it's like the skin is gonna go dark to light to dark. Um, yeah, the layers, each layer actually has its own like kind of sheath of skin. Um, and that's where the color comes from. The color is like the, the gentle protective layer on outside on the outside of each um, successive layer that goes in. Um, I, I love that there's an axis point and the artist recognized it too. So the one that hasn't been peeled, uh, we can find the angle of that onion. And you know you can do the top and then really you just have to focus on the outside. So the key, I think, at this stage of the drawing, I've kind of committed to a scale by drawing the first one. Um, I wonder if I should even lighten some of those lines. It might gray it out initially, but I can live with that. My, my lines are kind of heavy. I'm using this wonderful Bic mechanical pencil. And, you know, I can come back in and use those guidelines, the ones I just erased and make delicate lines. Um, okay, so what I was saying is that this, I'm, the commitment to the scale is that I want both onions to look like they're about the same size. You would get them from the same shop. And, you know, I think when you're picking, on, when you're picking out vegetables, um, you know, I will sometimes pick a big one and a small one um, just so I have options if I want to use a lot of tomato or a little tomato. Um, but in this case, it looks like these onions are pretty close to the same size. So in the way that the, the skin on the bottom was dark at the top, light in the middle, dark at the bottom, I'm gonna conform because again, I don't have, unfortunately I don't have colors. So the code for skin, um, you know, this protective flaky outer skin of the onion is dark on the bottom, light in the middle, and then dark on the top. And if you wanted to use a fancy font, um, this image delivers. Um, it's got nice line variation. Look at that O. There's a thick part of the O and then a thin part on the right. A, 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 st a thick um, structure to the end and then a thin um, little arch. So the, the, the font is actually nice and, you know, again, Jack, you've said, I said this a million times, but there's aspects to things in the world that you just will appreciate if you draw them and things that you'll notice if you draw them. And then you don't, people don't even know that they're missing it um, because they never go down that, that path of drawing. But when you draw and you see something that you never saw, you know, you're like, oh, now I get to see it. And you, know, you acknowledge that you probably wouldn't have noticed it before. <clears throat> Art allows you to see differently, which is um, really quite a, a discovery. It's really quite amazing. It's almost like, Jack, have you ever put on eyeglasses that are really super tinted, like uh, those red lens glasses? Yes. You might be, yeah? And it, it really changes how you see things. Yeah. That's really kind that, of how. It's like, it's like searching for I truth. Think. You like get addicted to it. The more you see, the more you, the more you know, the more you want to know, the more you want to, um, the more you want to dig. The more you dig, the more you know. Oh man, I cannot wait to do these tomatoes. So, um, the tomatoes, sketching the, somebody else's interpretation of the tomatoes um, gives you insight into the tomato um, in terms of like what another person was perceiving about the tomato. Um, you know, it also gives you um, a look into um, another person's um, system of solutions that um, you can then use uh, for yourself. 
So you're learning about the artist. Um, what's successful? I mean, this guy's obviously, you know, got hired to make this painting for um, this poster, and you know, we can kind of better appreciate it. I think, um, you know, sketching it. Um, all right. So it seems like he's got a design theme going with the tomato. So like with the vegetables at least. So um, it's like whole and then sliced. I hadn't noticed that before, but that's how he's arranging it. Um, the onion is sliced and then there's a whole one. The tomato is sliced and then there's a whole one. The carrot shows these sliced wedges, sliced wedges on the celery, and then a couple examples of whole ones. Um, so that's good. I mean, that's a, that's a theme. The theme is that it's those two components, sliced, not sliced, and then the variation is of, uh, in, you know, in the ingredients, of course. All right. Um, it looks like they are staggered too as they go down. I wish I had the luxury of staggering them. I might try to maybe move the tomatoes to the right, maybe a little bit more. I don't know. Let's, I'll, I'll try that as far as I can get over. Um, I'm going to start from where the green stem exists. And I'm seeing this little, this teeny little bulge right here, which I hadn't, it's unique because you don't think about this little bulge where the start of the stem is. I've never really noticed that before. Um, even while I've been slicing, but apparently this guy did notice it. Um, we're gonna get like a heart silhouette edge into a round bottom. So if I pull this heart, it's gonna come up and then curve under. And like where you would kind of pull it into a point um, in a heart, I'm gonna make it rounded. <clears throat> Excuse yes. me, Trevor. Yes, Dave. Um, I'm not sure how Jack is seeing this on his screen, um, but I'm seeing certain icons that are just, just in the way, if you can move your page to the over, just yeah. a hair more to your right. Yeah. That's yeah, a, that's better. Yes, that thank you. Point. And <laughs> if I could also really quickly mention Yep. You know, you're doing something that you have taught me that's so wonderful. For instance, you're, I'm, I'm thinking of the onion. You're not making uh, within the body of the onion and the one, the outside of the one that's not cut yet. You're not making a line from one point to another. You are starting a line, stopping, and then continuing as opposed to one straight line or you're varying the weight line that's what i do which really helps me see it as even more realistic so it's just something you've taught me you know over the years that really allows for more realism thanks thank you you and you i think there's a word for it but i i don't recall it um yeah I'm not, I'm not exactly, what was it like, what was it, line weight variation? Well, I don't understand. Yeah, that's part of it. The other thing is um, because it's not a single line, it's broken, like uh, line, yeah, yeah, yeah. no line. Yes, I got it. Yeah, broken line. Um, okay, cool. That, so if you look at the onion or the tomato top over here, there's the stem and then there's one, two, three, four, five. Um, uh, it's like a starfish um, of like almost like tentacles um, of leaves that come off. And one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five. So there's five on the other side too. Um, it's interesting. Um, okay, so I'm like a little scared, frankly, of the, the triangular um, leaves that come off of the middle of the stem. So the stem is here. We know that. And there's going to be five um, long, thin, triangular leaves, maybe curving, <laughs> maybe bumpy. Um, I'm, I'm scared of it. Um, so I'm going to hold off on that for a second. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to go for some like easy answers. So there's two ways of thinking about the tomato on the inside. One, you can think about like the outside the light part like the foam part and then the it, the center and then like the little like the oh, the egg shaped guts in the middle that's one way of doing it or um you can see the it's almost like the shape of a c 
you know, a C here or a backwards C that's holding this little chamber of all the pockets of like gel covered seeds. So I'm like, do I want to think about the skin and draw the thickness of the skin? Um, or do I want to draw the chamber of guts that holds the gel covered seeds? And I mean, there's a, I, I think I'm going to go with like drawing the C shape chamber because it feels, that feels easier to me. Now I'm not just blindly putting in this chamber. I mean, I am drawing it and I'm trying to like maintain proportion. Um, but for some reason that seemed like an easier, more logical way of drawing <clears throat> inside of this thing. And I could be proven wrong, but um, it's about positive shapes and negative shapes. So it's almost like this is the, the inner chamber and then you've got these seeds a row of them that are kind of nicely arranged, praying that they're the right size and shape. I'm trying to imagine um, what the, the seeds look like. Um, and then they are darker. You know, the, the seeds are light up against the dark. So the chamber's darker. Um, the inner guts, the reddish part is darker than the, the, the lighter skin. <coughs> the lighter skin and the lighter seeds. So I'm using ovals for the seeds and they seem to radiate out like they're nicely stacked. Okay. So I'm shading the area around the seeds. And then Stacy, I've been really diligent about checking to see whether other guys are coming in. Um, but if I forget or if I go more than like a minute or two. Okay. I'm, I'm I have a feeling the younger guys are gonna come in. They're all gonna be at the same time. Okay, it's and it's 1.32. Okay, cool. <clears throat> all right, well, that's good. So before I put the skin on, because of all the green leaves being in front of the skin, um, I gotta do those and I just have to face the music. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna do one S-curve triangle for the green leaf here. I'm gonna do one on this side, and Jack, I think you were here for the class where I was talking about overlapping. I'm doing the ones that are closest to us first, and then yeah, yeah. I will you know, overlap this other side behind the stem. This one comes up. Actually, that's not overlapped by anything. And there's this one in the middle that's going to be overlapped by the very first one on the left that I put in. I wish that uh, now it looks like a wild like octopus or something. <laughs> Hopefully, I made the triangles too long. It looks unnatural. Um, all right. All right, Lord, I will listen. <clears throat> okay, so I just cut off the top, so I'm just going to try and make them shorter. And they do. I also decided to draw the carrot because the carrot looks cool. Dude, the carrot's amazing. I can't wait to draw the carrot. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the carrot. <clears throat> And then it looks like my skin is a little bit thicker on this side. So I'm kind of adjusting to try to get the proper thickness <clears throat> of the skin on the tomato. And the luxury is that now I can take that line. And as I'm drawing the outside red portion of the skin, I can carve in <clears throat> to the skin on the other mm. side. Whoa, cool. And then I'm darkening the red. Now I know I'm acknowledging that the green leaves are darker, but it's hard to say because I think the green is dark and I think the red is dark, but the colors are so different that they're like they're they're actually opposites on the color wheel. So even if they're both dark, the green is going to stand out from the red so much. Um, here I just decided to make the green darker. And then I'll be able to distinguish between the red and the green just by making the green slightly darker than the red. Whether that's a good move or not is um, still yet to be determined. I think it's going to be a good idea. If I can just make a really quick comment. Yeah. Um, that again, that you have that I, I'm reminded of your um, teaching that I 
found myself not looking up and down and up and down at the reference material and how incredibly <clears throat> helpful it is when I, when I am in fact doing that. Actually do that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. And, um, <clears throat> just, just, just constantly do that. Um, my, the way that the artist has arranged these vegetables is that the one that's in the front is lower and the one that's behind um, is higher on the rectangle. <clears throat> you can see it at the base of the onions here. You can see it at the base of the tomatoes. I'm going to violate that um, because I want it to fit in this, you know, my, my, my screen that I'm working on. And I'm only doing the full ones. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, good. <clears throat> I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, but it does look a little bit awkward. All right, so I got the stem on our tomato. I think the tomato is wider than it is tall. And then the tops, you want to get the indication of that heart shape. And then we'll do the five. One, two, three, four, and five. <clears throat> Staying consistent with my theme of darker greens. Um, so the stem itself almost feels like it's a sixth uh, stem or a sixth leaf, but it's not. It's one stem, five leaves. And as I'm shading in my tomato, I'm trying to mimic the skin from the first one simultaneously. Um, I'm actually in my mind um, thinking red and it sounds like kind of a waste of time, but um, just because you're drawing doesn't mean that you're not, just because you're drawing in black and white doesn't mean that you're not thinking about color. You should almost always be thinking about color <clears throat> because the drawing is the preparation for the next phase, which is the color. So you might as well get a head start. And the outside seems to be the darker, and then it gets a little bit lighter as it comes into these highlights. And I am protecting the couple highlights that show up on that tomato. That's cool, it looks like a tomato. I'm happy about that one. Um, now there are some, even though the skin is lighter, um, it's gonna be darker than the paper. So I need to analyze where the cut has happened and then attempt to um, you know, knock that down a little bit. Um, when I say knock that down, I mean like instead of being raw paper, I want it to be a little bit of a tone. And it would be essentially a pink color. And it is 138. 138, okay, cool. <clears throat> yeah, we got a little bit of a late start. Um, that, that silhouette line, um, especially up in this top left shoulder, that line gets blended into the, into the fruit. Same above and on the side. You wanna be careful of that. You know, the lines are helpful, but <clears throat> when lines do get blended into the tone of the object, you, you should do that. And it seems like you're eliminating the lines. You're, you're, you're really just, you know, matching the lines with its, you know, identity, which is either skin or a fleshy interior. All right, looks like I got room. Jack, which one would you rather have me draw, the uh, celery or the, the tomato? I mean, or the carrot? The carrot. Okay. Um, so the, I have room enough down here so I can see where my carrot's gonna go. Um, I'm drawing these medallions which are just little baby cylinders. I know you may not have drawn the sliced part, but I mean, it's too fun to not do. Um, in the same way that the onion, you know, was basically close to a circle, um, each one of our uh, carrots is so close to a circle. It is, um, you know, slightly taller than it is wide because it is bent, you know, it's, it's seen from the side 
Um, but it's almost more helpful to think about it like a circle. And then you just, you just like pinch that circle a little bit. Imagine, can you see this? So this is the circle. Uh, the tape is like the circle. And then if I just pinch it, see how ever so slightly it becomes an oval? That's the same mm -hmm. kind of function. Like I could pinch it and it gets smaller or I could actually turn it and then it gets, turns into an oval. So it's both. So it's a circle that as it turns becomes um, an oval. Ooh. It's also a circle that I can just pinch and it creates the illusion of being an oval. That was some good instruction, actually. If I move the, there we go. Something got bumped. <clears throat> All right. Um, and they are like dominoes. So this one, the third one is laying, you know, in theory, flat on the tabletop. So that each orientation of the medallion is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And you can go, you know, in terms of these cylinders, when you do the side, it's just like coins. You can go sideways or up and down. And I think the artist has really chosen mostly to go sideways. And I think it's because the nature of the carrot is to have that bracelet line. So the bracelet lines on the carrot actually run this way. So some of the creases, even though they're medallions, they, will, they would show some creasing, um, even in these thin wedges. Yes. <clears throat> Carrots. Um, <clears throat> Carrots have a unique geometry. We have to slice it, but I think they're kind of like, um, I think they're kind of like wood um, in that they have like cracks in the center and then, but they also spiral out and have a, um, you know, almost like growth rings. The light's coming from the left and the underside looks like they're getting a little bit heavier. The right side, that also seems to be a theme that this artist is using. They probably have, they probably lit the, uh, all of these objects, you know, probably set them up in a light box, photographed them um, and kind of had the same light arrangement. And <clears throat> you know, like, the, like the onion had light at the top, but dark at the top, light in the middle, dark at the bottom these you know, carrot wedges, dark at the bottom, <clears throat> dark at the top. <clears throat> All right, so guard your top edge, knowing that it's gonna be probably a little bit lighter because the uh, where the carrot comes out, um, the carrot is, is like kind of delightfully regular, um, meaning that it doesn't twist and turn and go different different directions. All right, cool. We got Brendan coming in. I have to mute you. Okay. All right, here come the other guys. Good stuff. I had a feeling this was gonna happen. This is great. Henry, Charles. Hey boys, come on in. We're just sketching some veggies. Have no fear. Jack, do you want to hold yours up? See how you're doing? Um, why is my view? Okay, cool. Nice, Jack. Nice. Hold that a uh, little closer to you. One second, I need to write my a camera. To right. Sure. I could see it, but. Oh, I can't see it at all. Are you holding it up? Okay. Um, all right, boys. So the guys that just came in, um, Jack, you finished your, you finished your carrot, right? Yes. All right, cool. So guys that just came in, we are going to warm up by drawing the celery. Um, and I just got to make sure everybody's coming in here. Declan's coming in. 
I got to keep my Thank eye you, on Jack. And uh, what's your boss? All right, Declan, I'm muting you, boss. No offense. Bye. Um, Take care. Bye bye, Jack. Oh, Jack's out of here. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, uh, exactly at 1.45. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Okay. It's all good. Mr. Uh -huh. Twist, why yes, is there sir. only four kids here? Uh, I have no idea. I, th I think people might not be in school today. Hello. I don't know. Maybe. But, um, Brandon, good to see you. Jacqueline, Henry, Charlie, good to see you all. Um, Charlie, Can we turn on your video. Charles. Okay, uh, cool. get that yes, thank paper. You. Make sure you guys. We're waiting for our pencils and paper to arrive. <laughs> All right. Well, let me know when that. You comes. Let us know as soon as you get that. Um, but uh, Finn's coming in. Looks good. I kept pencils and paper. Good. Oh, we got our pencils and paper. They're here. All right, you're ready to roll. Um, all right, so we're doing the celery. The celery is going to be. Um, this is just going to be the warm up. Oh, by the way, just to give you, we're doing ingredients for um, one of my favorite dishes of all time. It's called bolognese. Um, it's basically spaghetti and meatballs, but there's. Um, let me pull this down here. As Liam comes in. It's like super rich. It's from mm -hmm. Bologna. Um, is it, if, I don't know if anybody's been to Spain or not Spain, but um, Italy. This is there's a region in Italy, like northern Italy. There's a whole um, series of beautiful cities: Vicenza, Padua, Venice. Um, all northern Italy have really delicious food. This is um, um, Bologna is not. Like, it's still in the in the Veneto, like it's still in the north. Um, but it's known for like having some really rich, delicious food. So there's like a lot of heavy meat, a lot of heavy cream. Um, this meal just like packs a punch. Anyway, I've been studying um, the artists from Bologna, like Renaissance artists from Bologna. And um, I stumbled ac across, you know, basically the, the, the city that my favorite Italian dish is named for. So um, in the first part, the other guys um, were sketching the, some of the ingredients. And we're going to keep going um, on the ingredients. And then once we get a couple of those, we'll actually draw the plate of pasta. So does that make sense? You guys ready to go? You guys got your pencils and paper? Let's fire this thing up. We've been recording. So um, I kind of like, I kind of like this angle. Uh, I was going vertical the other way, but I think going horizontal might be, might be the trick. All right, let me get this up. <clears throat> yes, celery and garlic. All right, first up, celery. Um, there's a side of me that thinks that we should draw. Um, let's draw this celery piece right here. Um, so don't draw the thickness yet. We're, we want to see it like in the shape of like a backward C. And I might make mine a little bit larger than it needs to be, but that's all right. So we got to see that there's like a, ooh, see that there's this arch on this side, it's convex, and it goes concave. And then this like, tr like gutter is where you would put like peanut butter. So we're making this like almost like a block letter C. And this form is gonna be repeated, you know, throughout the rest of like the main stick of celery. All right, so we got this C shape. <clears throat> now we can draw like the root, like the um, vein system. And that's running vertically. So this is where we get the thickness. So not only are we drawing the thickness to the celery, but you can almost see how it's like ribbed here because the, the way that celery grows is that you have this like system of like, just like any plant, you have these, um, you know, the veins that bring all the nutrients in the water up kind of like the column of the, of the celery. Um, so I don't know who just came in, but I just let somebody in the room. Um, guys, if you just entered, please mute it. And then all we did was start with the letter C in reverse. We did it in reverse. Um, the C, it's like a block letter C. 
And then now once we've gotten that C, we're gonna draw the thickness of the actual slice. So these are sliced not too thin, you know, not, not finely, they're not finely chopped. <clears throat> okay, let's try it again from a different angle. So this C, we want the C to be about the same size as the other one. Notice that these chunks, all three of these chunks are about the same size. So we've got this round part here, convex. And then on the inner part where you put the peanut butter, it's concave. And then you get the other end, which is convex. And then it's almost like a miniature rainbow. You can think about it like a rainbow, whatever. Whatever kind of like a shape association you can make with this thing, it'll be helpful. Um, then we're gonna do the sides here. These are the sides of the thickness of the cut. And then I'm doing this little ribble, ribbed side because you know celery has kind of an irregular um, you know, shell on the outside. I don't know if it's a shell, it's just like the skin on the outside. I personally love celery, like celery and peanut butter might be like my favorite snack ever. You sound um, like my mom. I know. I mean, I, I've always liked it though. It's not, I mean, it's not like it's like a new thing. Like I became an adult and I, I've always liked celery and I don't even really like vegetables that much. I didn't like carrots. I liked carrots when I was young. I didn't like carrots when I was like in my, my like college years. Now baked carrots are like my favorite. <clears throat> anyway, raw celery doesn't get better. Um, the light is coming from the left side, guys. So wherever you're on the inside of the loop, it seems to go a little bit darker. So I'm looking at this dark green area right here. It goes a little darker. I'm looking at the far side of the base over here. That's darker. Definitely darker on the right side. I'm not actually adding shade necessarily, but I'm um, I'm putting more lines and the more lines you put down, the darker it is and it can suggest a shadow. Now there is no shadow. These are just like floating in like space. But if there was a shadow, it might look like that. It might look like this. Anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to get into trouble. I want to stay kind of true to the, um, uh, you know, to the, to the sketch. This is a, um, an artist that like, is making watercolors. And I think it's important to draw paintings. Um, and you can think about, even though you're drawing in pencil, you can think about color. So you can, as I'm adding these little, these little circles, which are like kind of like the main veins to the, um, to the celery, I'm thinking about a dark green. Um, the inside is lighter. I'm thinking about a light green. <clears throat> All right, third time to charm. This was facing to the left. This was facing more down. This one's going to face up and it's overlapped. So the face of it is not overlapped, which is convenient. So I did an arch, I did a trough, I did another arch. And I'm going to complete the rainbow. It's upside down. And then in order to show that it is overlapped, I can show the sides of my celery. Sides here. Um, the base where it's supposedly touching the ground I'm going to use the edge of my C or the top of the rainbow and then just repeat that same angle. And it should be complete with like with like the third dimension. That's what's so cool about this is that it, you're actually suggesting that it's that it's 3D. <clears throat> and again, the lights coming from the left, so the sides on the right side are going to be in shadow very subtle details of the the kind of the if the the slice what the, the top surface of the slice what that looks like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right groovy um my arrangement is going to be a little bit different but i think you guys will forgive me i'm going to move these up here um now i think this is like in my opinion like the fun part we're going to follow mine's going to be as, exactly as the same as yours that's fine. You can make it mine, you can make it yours, or you can make it like this artist. Um, this is your art time. Um, and if you're like, I'm not drawing celery, I don't feel like it, like you can free draw. Just um, you can use some of these ideas. I mean, <clears throat> anyway, I don't have to go into it. The rules of Mitchell School, like my school, the school that I'm in right now, you there's only three. Um, the first two don't really apply here, but you can't intentionally hurt anybody's feelings. 
Um, you have to be aware of your, like your mood and how it's affecting people. On Zoom, it's not that big of a deal, but in class, it really matters. And then third, which is the important thing, which is what you need to know now, is that you need to maintain artistic independence. I'm an artist, I'm a teacher. I am here to teach you ideas so that you can become whatever kind of artist you wanna become. Um, but the important thing is that you are making decisions, um, you know, independent decisions. Again, I'm just giving suggestions, just giving information. Use it or not use it um, as you wish. Um, okay, so back to the celery. I'm gonna draw the celery that's in front first. And then the second one, they're so similar. Um, and <clears throat> honestly, it's so similar to what we just did. So I'm starting off with my C, concave, trough, convex. And I'll try to fit it, make sure it stays on my screen. So that is sliced, complete with the rippled edge. So I drew it without the ripple and then I just darkened it to make it rippled. <clears throat> and then I'm basically making an extender, all right? so. In the same way that we extended downward for the thickness, I'm gonna extend off to the side for the length of my piece of celery. And you know, you can, you know, where it's curves, you know, where the, the change from like the curve of the top to the trough, the artist uses another line here. And then where the trough turns up again, the artist seems to use another line. You know, these are all lines that are like internally. And then, you know, at the actual edge of the celery, there's, you know, clearly a dark line, which is kind of fun. Um, that's actually not that hard. The hard part, in my opinion, is on the far side and it's going away from us. So it's almost like you have to go the curve at the top. We're cutting, we're basically cutting off our celery doing the curve at the top, just like we had the curve in the front. We're gonna go trough, trough to trough, and then it's gonna curve again up here. And then you get the side. That's awesome. So it's like a boat, um, it's almost like a half pipe, or I don't know if you guys go snowboarding, but it's like the half pipe and you like, little like snowboard can be up here, you dip down into the bowl and then you go back up again. Start up here, dip down in the bowl, back up again. Anyway, it's not that deep of a pipe, but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna shade the inside of the bowl because the lights come in here. So you can imagine where you're standing on the top of the pipe is not in shade. So there's like, it's lighter. But then as you dip in, because the light is here, the inside of that pipe gets a shadow. So this, the way that we're using the shading is helping to create uh, like 3D, the illusion of 3D. So if the inside of the pipe here is dark, then we know the far side is probably dark too. So you come back up the other side across the top and then the far side of the celery will be dark. We can add these little circles, even though the artist really didn't but it makes it feel more like celery. Yes. Um, and then maybe in the trough, the artist uses all these little straight lines. It's like light green straight lines. I can use those too. Hopefully in this context, it looks like celery. Um, a lot of times when you're drawing in black and white, it might not look right because part of what defines vegetables and fruits and objects are color. And if you don't have color, then I don't know. I still think it looks like celery. <clears throat> Am I going too fast? I'm like, I'm all worked up. I love, <laughs> I'm, I think that drawing looks so good. How are you guys doing? How are you? Yeah, man. Okay, good. I like I like it. Now I know I'm not crazy. That looks great. Oh, hey, hold that just for a sec, Brandon. Yes, yeah, Brandon. Good work. Man. Very nice. Yes, indeed. Brad. <clears throat> okay, Henry. You look great, y'all. Oh, I'm still. Thank you. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Charles. Nice and still, Charles. Yep. Well, you guys really got that. Looks um, good, Charlie. Yeah, so good. nicely, the trough of the uh, celery stick. It really does look good. <clears throat> All right, cool. Let's, um, I, we, we could do the, other, we could do the second one, but I feel like you guys got it. So I want to, I want to move on to um, the garlic. So we're, oh, by the way, if you wanna, I would try this. Um, let's do the, let's do the lettering. Um, the lettering is really beautiful. I, I didn't even see it until I started drawing with Jack in the past class, but the lettering is wonderful in that it's got, it looks like regular handwriting, but be really deliberate about where the letters are thin and then where the letters are thick. And I'll just, I'll just draw it right here. It's celery. So it starts thin, then it curls like a regular C. So you think, okay, yeah, well, it's just a letter. So <clears throat> it's not a letter in this case because you have to draw it. Meaning like each letter is kind of like, um, um, it's a font. So even though it's a font to look like regular handwriting, you almost have to draw the letter. And this is a poster that they used for like a restaurant. I mean, somebody got paid to do this. So like <clears throat> regular, regular lettering doesn't apply. You actually have to like design and draw the letters. So before we move on to the garlic, just like quickly do this. So it's like thin, then it goes thick in like the body of the C and then it goes thin again. The E, similar theme, <clears throat> you know, the body of the E is thicker on the left and then it gets a little bit thinner as it curls under itself. C, E, the L starts um, you know, with a solid top, gets thick down the length of it. And then there's this teeny little tail where it gets thin and ends pleasantly. <clears throat> um, I actually don't like it when fonts repeat exactly. Um, so that's why drawing your letters is so fun. So I'm just gonna repeat the same theme for the E, thick in the body, terminates in a nice little abrupt tail. R has a solid body and then a thin upward and then a thicker downward. <clears throat> Vertical element is thick, thin, and then thick again. The Y thin, but thick at the, the left, the bowl of the Y is thinner then the body of the, the, the uh, tail is all, the vertical element is thick, it goes thin at the base and then terminates in a little dot. <clears throat> it doesn't seem like much, like it doesn't, but it really makes a difference um, in terms of presentation. So you can look up a thousand different th fonts. Um, people, people make their careers off of like developing lettering. It is an art form um, in and of itself. Okay, cool. Um, so what do we got? It's 205, right? Yes, 203 is 203. what I have. Yes, 203. Um, all right, yeah, let's do this garlic. 10 seconds, 10 seconds on here. Well, you guys can see the, you guys can see the celery. I'm just gonna change my drawing. <clears throat> Right, this, the the garlic doesn't look like much, um, but it is like kind of particularly strong. Um, and I'll give you, um, <clears throat> we'll just draw one of the cloves. So there's one individual clove here and it, believe it or not, it has three sides that's exposed at the moment. So to draw the clove, um, I'm drawing this circular uh, kind of like entry point into the cluster. So at the bottom of the onion, they all, they all meet at the bottom and this is kind of where the roots happen. So I'm using this oval, looks like a little ring. Um, I talked about this in the last one and Stacy brought up to my attention, it's called a broken line. Um, so it can be, you, you know, we know this is a circle, but it might be darker on the top right, might be darker on the bottom left, might be, you know, thinner on the top, 
center. You know, it, the, the lines have variations, even though it is kind of a, like just a ring. <clears throat> and then like a flame, um, this lighter portion, which is the broad top, it's gonna flame out to the right, out to the left. And it's gonna almost teardrop in to the tip right here. So this is an individual clove and these are cloves that are bound. So these are not part of this one unless it's part of the back. <clears throat> and you know we're drawing um, the form of the clove that's got the meaty inside with all the flavor, um, but these have not yet been peeled. So the actual marks that we're making here are actually the, the um, it's almost like an onion skin. There's a, there's, a, there's a flaky dry skin to the, the garlic. <clears throat> and the, when I was talking about three sides, the um, ring is one side, the thin lighter broad side, the, the main part of the flame is two. And then you see a little bit of the bottom, almost like the bowl shaped rounded portion of the garlic there. <clears throat> We're gonna make a kind of a yin, a yin yang situation. So this one's flowing up this way and then the one next to it, we can use a, all three parts are the same, it's just a different orientation. Same as the, the celery. So I'm gonna see this ring part from the side, see how the flame of the top of the garlic angles up and meets into a point really nice <clears throat> and then we'll see a little bit of the the bowl shaped bottom of the garlic <clears throat> i'm being aware i mean this the 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 garlic unlike the celery the, there's a lot of shadows in the celery the garlic is mostly lighter lines now the the dark lines are super important and i'm going to point that out but if you think about raw paper dark lines mid-tone lines and light lines. There's only three types of lines. So it's easy for, I think, most, most people to see the dark ones first. So I'm gonna <clears throat> overemphasize my dark ones here. Just not overdo it, overemphasize it, but not overdo it. And then I'm gonna try and get some mid-tone lines to define the silhouetted edge, maybe the top, maybe some of the texture. <clears throat> but it looks like I already went heavy. Um, kind of like the, the light, delicate, dry, but delicate, um, brittle skin of the outside of this garlic. And then I don't know if this is true, but it looks like there's some very fine, almost like yellow markings. Do you see how there's like a little bit of, maybe a little bit of indication of like the finest, thinnest lines <clears throat> on that top part. All right, so these cloves are independent um, of each other. So they've been broken off. Um, the way the garlic is set up is that it's basically like a pumpkin. It's like a pumpkin, instead of having like a stem at the top, um, all those, the separate cloves meet almost in like a little, like a little puff of like, um, like, a, like a, the, the tip of like, kind of like baby's hair or something. My, uh, my niece didn't have hair for the longest time and she had this little, tuft of hair that my, my sister would like lift up and it'd be like this little spike. That's what this little cluster of uh, garlic reminds me of. <clears throat> okay, so let's do that. Um, I'm gonna do the first, I'm gonna start with the base where are these, um, where the stem would kind of, where the root system would be. And then I'm gonna do one flame in the middle. Swelling out. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do two on either side. So then there's one swelling that looks this way, rounded, curls up into that little tuft of hair. And then the one on the right, you don't get to see it quite as much because it's hidden by our first set. Boom. <clears throat> Um, there's a lot of little cloves and they are actually really irregular. You've probably broken one of these apart in, you know, in the kitchen while you're cooking, but um, some, there's some random ones that hang off. Like this one could be even thicker. There could be another one. You know, it's not, they're all over the place kind of. 
but <clears throat> uh, that's our garlic. The marks of the skin seem to be, um, we did an, a tomato and we did an onion earlier. And some of the, the markings of these fruit, of these vegetables had dark at the top, light in the middle, like in the body, and then dark again at the bottom. That seems to be a theme um, that is carried through it. Not so much with the celery, but you know, definitely with, uh, you can see it up here in the, you see the onion here, it's like dark at the top, light in the body, and then dark again at the base. Same on the side of the skin here, dark, light in the middle, um, dark at the bottom. So if I go back up to here, it's a very similar game. Um, it's just much lighter than that dark um, onion. So dark at the top, not too dark, light in the middle, and then dark again at the bottom. And it is 210. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Boom, 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 boom. All right, y'all. Uh, let's practice. How are you doing? Let's practice this lettering. If, any, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I went too fast, let me know. I will, um, I'm just going to shore up some of my lines. Those look good. And I'm going to do the label. I'm going to draw these letters too. Awesome. That looks great. Stay I'm scared. missing them. Ah, oh, Brendan. Hold that nice and still, like freeze. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna take, Thank you, Brendan. Um, this might be this might not be a, like wise, but I'm just gonna try a different approach, just because. I mean, I I'm always constantly trying new things in art and trying new solutions in terms of coming up with better, more efficient ways of sketching. That's great. Stace, can you get that picture? <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I can. See the, uh... I can. So what? Well, nice and still. Boom. Thank you. I'm going to do the lettering. Well done, Charlie. I'm going to do the Thank lettering you. without the thickness. So I'm going to sketch garlic with just the thin letters. And then I'm going to go back in and, you know, thicken them up where they need to be. So that's all of the letters sketched out thin. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna you know, intentionally start thin at the top of the G, get thicker, get thinner, basically not draw anything at the base of the, the bowl of the G. And then I'm gonna make it thicker here. And then do a medium thickness at the, the cap of the G. The left side of the A is darker. And then the body of the A is dark and it gets a little tail. Cool. And there's like, there, it's, I'm, I feel like this way I might have a little bit more confidence because I know the letters are in the right place. So I like it. And then if my letter, like look at the I, it might be a little bit too far to the right. So as I thicken, as I thicken the I, I'm gonna thicken the left side of the eye to make it almost be in a better position. Nice. Hadn't thought of that before either. The C is good. I'm just gonna thicken the middle of the C. It really does terminate in a little garlic. Needs garlic. There's this movie called uh, from like the eighties. I haven't seen it in the longest time. It's called Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> Stacy, seen that movie, right? Yes. So he's in the he's in the jungle, and there's this dude that's cooking up like a bat, like a vampire bat. And he's like eating it off of the barbecue, like with his Australian accent. And they're like looking at this guy eating a a, a bat, and he goes, he leans over, he goes, "Is that good?" And the guy goes needs garlic oh my gosh <laughs> and i guess I meant, yeah it's wild i never thought eating bats would be brought up again <clears throat> all right cool two minutes on this one boys well maybe thir th a minute maybe one minute more um if you're bored 
You could do the uh, stick of butter. Ooh, what is that? Stacy, have you ever seen this butter that's like curled? It looks like a shaving. Never. It looks like a butter shaving. No. I think it's like cut. I have seen it. Yeah. I've seen it ice cream. I've seen it like I've ice seen cream. it. Yeah. It's awesome. Me neither. Well, the block of butter is I'm going to make a cube. And then I just noticed this. Look at this corner. This corner is like sliced off. I shouldn't even be doing this. I want to draw the spaghetti. But well, the it the butter is 215. The butter is so good, though. Look at the spiral. <laughs> that reminds me of calamari. It does have a calamari feel. So this is like a cylinder. What was it, all in the same plate? Yeah. It looks like it to me. <laughs> Probably should have just drawn the butter. Do you guys want to draw the butter? Yeah. Okay. Let's draw the butter. I'm going to start with, I, I'm going to do what I just did, but I'm going to do it like more intentionally and um, explain it. All right. Cool. I'm glad you guys are down. Um, we'll have to, I think we will have time. I think we'll have time to do the, uh, what's the other part? Spaghetti. Yeah. The spaghetti. Thank you. But, um, the <clears throat> girl. What? Oh yeah, <laughs> if the Mrs. Bolognese. Miss, yeah. I have a. Uh, there's a drawing. Somebody made a cartoon of Miss Bolognese. So if the if the dish were a cartoon character of a, a woman, I should show it to you. No, no, we'll do the butter first. Sorry, we'll do the butter. Okay, so I just realized um, as I was doing that other sketch, that quicker sketch. Um, this is a cube. So we want to build this block of butter. Um, you can make it more like our butter. Our butter is like less, it's, um, you know, less thick. It's like a thinner kind of longer block. You could do it that way, or you could just like stick with this. Um, it looks like somebody came across with a knife and sliced off the corner, um, you know, for cooking or whatever. It, it makes a nice little geometric triangle at that corner. Um, I love it. Um, in between our block of butter, um, and the roll of butter um, is like what might be parsley. I'm imagining it's parsley. It could be basil of some sort. It doesn't look like a basil leaf to me. Um, but there's some kind of leafy, leafy material. Um, this roll of butter is like fantastic. I can't, I can't wait to draw that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the, the, the flat base and I'm going to spiral it up and do and draw like the side of the butter first, just like we did like the C shape of the, um, of the celery. So we're gonna do the side of it first and then we'll extend the cylinder out from there. It won't, it, it shouldn't be bad. Um, I like what makes this drawing of the butter a little bit challenging, but not really, if you just listen to what I'm saying. I like to start when I draw cubes, I like to start from the corner. So this vertical element here, I'm imagining that the butter is not cut. Okay, so I'm drawing a block of butter that is in fact not cut with the knife. So I'm drawing the top plane. I started from the vertical and then I built the top side here, which is also the front. So you gotta use a little bit of x-ray vision. So we're trying to get this, this block it looks like it's cheese. I mean, most of the cheese looks like a block of like cheddar cheese. Like from our grocery store, the Cracker Barrel. It's not Cracker Barrel. Is it Cracker Barrel? What block of cheddar is it? Anyway, it looks like a block of cheddar. I'm feeling good about that cube. Now, you you come up. There's this point. You come across here. There's this point. And you come across the front, there's that point. So I made those three dots and that's gonna be where they get sliced. So if I make, 
connect it. And then how can you remove that cheese? Well, use your eraser. So there's my cheese that's been cut off. Um, I didn't realize that, you know, when I was talking about the line work on the, the garlic, it's like, oh yeah, use light lines. This butter is basically made with like the, with no pencil marks. It's made with yellow paint, like light yellow paint. Um, look at this corner here. It's almost like this corner like almost disappears. So if you used heavy yeah. lines, it's okay. Just know like the way the artist painted it, it's mostly light, like it's super light. All right, but we, that's, not, that's not shade yet. Let's get all the players involved. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna, um, I can tell that the spiral overlaps the bottom corner. So I'm gonna do the spiral. And then I gotta make sure that the, the roll of butter is like on the same plate. So here's the flat bottom of the butter. The butter. And then it's gonna spiral up the side, almost like a wave in the ocean. All right, so there's the bottom, comes up, spirals. I'm gonna erase that line, which is the, the line is the corner of the butter. <clears throat> and then just like the celery, <clears throat> This butter has a thickness. So I'm going to go up and I'm just going to repeat that line a little bit separated from the first one. It's harder than it looks. Nice. I mean, it looks good. <clears throat> um, the thickness of the celery came out. The thickness of the butter comes out. And then this line that I used for my original spiral, I'm gonna repeat that wherever you want the butter to end. Amazing. I'm honestly, the theme for today was not supposed to be the third dimension. It just turned out that way. Um, some kind of, uh, whatever they used to like scrape the butter had a wavy texture to it. And you can see it coming up the side. And the way the artist did it, it's almost like there are these curved triangles. At least that's how I'm seeing it. I'm trying to imagine the tool um, that created it, but the ridges are kind of curvy and they're triangular. So the, the thickness of the butter seems to be darker. So the top plane is dark. You know, the side is definitely light. The top is definitely light. So the side is light. So that means the inside has to be dark. And then the triangles that we did, those have to be dark too. So these are all things that we're sketching that would be so much better if we had color. <clears throat> oh no, Stacy got booted. Audio is connecting. So more eraser lines, boys. Um, in between the butters, the block of butter and the roll of butter, we've got these leaves. Center leaf, jagged outside. What if it's mint? It has a mint kind of feel. <clears throat> Two smaller leaves. So I like to, when I do a leaf, I find the stem the tip, and then I do the sides. Center, triangular tip, and then the sides. And I can replace my line for the butter. It'd be sweet if it were green. Luckily I have a green pencil right here. It's not cheating. I just happen to have a pencil. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, as time goes on, boys, we might, I might have uh, your teachers try to get you some colored pencils. 
because color is a lot of fun. Um, the plate, my goodness. All right. <clears throat> so before you guys panic about the plate, um, I'm going to point out how I how I think I'm going to do it. And then the nice thing about the plate is that um, no matter where you put your butter, no matter how big it is, how small it is, you should be able to put everything on the plate. And I'm going to, you just have to like compare the edges. So the back of the plate up here connects with the, the leaf. Then it comes, as it turns the corner here, almost like a racetrack, it gets really close to the edge of the roll. And then, you know, the distance between the front corner is really short. The distance between the far corner, it's a little bit longer. And then it finally disappears behind the butter. I don't know, maybe three quarters of the way up the back. So I tried to identify, you know, the distances away from, you know, where there are known parts and then you get this curve here on the right, you get this curve here on the left, and then you should be able to fill in the blanks kind of. So we just gotta, if, you were, if you're a horse at Preakness and you're going around the curve, you're coming around the bend here, you know, what is the straightest path that would be taken? And hit all those points. And just for the record, a plate from seen from the side is called um, an ellipse. And I was showing this earlier. Um, this is like the roll of tape. If you see the roll of tape from the side, <clears throat> it becomes um, an ellipse. You know, it's a circle seen from the side. You can actually, it, I, it's right around my plate, like that dimension. <clears throat> but conceptually, if you're drawing it, you can take a circle and you can also pinch it and it becomes you know, an oval. So you can both pinch the circle and it becomes an oval, or you can take the oval and turn it to the side, bend it a little bit, and it becomes um, an ellipse. Nice. Stace, you're back. So nice to be back. Thank you. Were you in the waiting room for a while? Um. Only a couple of minutes. Yeah, sorry about that. I no, it's okay. I was taking a picture, and I think I was. I think I blew up myself off inadvertently. So, oh wow! So it wasn't it wasn't my fault. Look at your look at your butter. Nice butter. <clears throat> um, all right. So, whoever's butter's up there, you wow, want to you want to be a little aware. Up of the um let's see how is oh nice olives that's great yeah these are all great um let me just point out this one thing that will be helpful i think i'm seeing it in at least two of you guys actually all three of you guys if you look at the yeah, angle, henry put that up. just be be aware of the angle of the front of the butter compared to the back of the butter um i'm drawing it up here some of you know like you have a lot of you guys, this extra corner. Yeah. There's like this extra corner up here and the back of the butter needs to be a little flatter. Thank you. Um, and I'm actually gonna shade the top of the butter here. So this part, this little, this little tail up here, that needs to go away by flattening the back of the butter. And you can just compare it to the front. The front and the back, they're not exactly parallel, but they're pretty close. Yeah, and it looks like those corners are just the tiniest bit rounded. Well, just a the, skosh. All of, all of the edges are kind of rounded, actually. I mean, look at the mm -hmm. right here. I mean, I didn't, I didn't round them, but maybe I should have. Ooh, does it look better with rounded edges? Hmm, might. I didn't add a thickness to the plate, but the thickness to the plate might be helpful. 
I love your parsley. Thank you. Yeah, the parsley. Yeah, it's look. Is it the first splash of color we've seen? Yes, it is definitely the yeah. first splash of color. Um, all right, guys. Um, I was gonna. We were gonna do this other. Um, we we're gonna do the whole plate, but I don't think there's time. And somebody sketched the olives and did like a really great job. So I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna put in the right. the, the word butter, and then um, I'm gonna sketch these olives. Those of you that are curious about the olives, there's three olives, two are not overlapped. So there's one olive that has an axis that runs this way. And then there's another olive that is flat on the table with an axis that runs this way. And then the third one is the one that's exciting because that one is overlapped by the first two. Anyway. I got to do my butter lettering. B. And I'm going to use this, the approach that I took last time where I draw all of the letters without their thickness. So I can make sure that they're in the right place and then I'll thicken them up. The, uh, the R I think is particularly interesting. I love this little tail right here. And when the when the letters are in the in the right spot, you can almost draw them. Yeah, you, know, you could draw them from front to back, or you know back to front. It doesn't actually. Once all the letters are placed properly, um, you can draw them any way you want. You know, in any order, I should say. Straighten up that T. Wow, it's so good. I love those vertical columns of the U and then like a thin bottom. Very powerful verticals. <clears throat> yeah, the, the vertical element in lettering is, is, uh, is I, I, don't, I don't mean to underestimate it, but I think I might. All right, there's some butter. There's some butter, baby. Um, all right, so I hopefully you guys did sketch the uh, you know the orbs, the ovals of the olives. Um, there seem to be three components roughly to the olive um, in terms of the tone. So each olive has a highlight that I think you want to protect. So it's this little oval dot, and I and even drawing that out might be a little bit too dark because the, it's the lightest part of the olive. Um, the darkest part of the olive is gonna be the underside. So by taking my line and fading it into the shadow underside of the olive, that's good, but that line almost becomes thicker and thicker. And then it wants to lighten up and gradually get lighter as it approaches the highlight. Now, I never, again, being able to draw allows you to, to see, see things that you hadn't seen before. Um, there is like a fingernail highlight on each one of these guys. Look at that thing. There's a fingernail highlight describing the roundness of the olive. Incredible. Um, all right, so I put in two highlights. So there's, it's almost like a one-eyed smiley face. You know, there's like a smiley face here, smiley face here, smiley face there with one eye. This guy's even got two eyes. <clears throat> okay, so as I, you know, move out of the dark bottom of the olive, I'm gonna gradually transition into the highlights without covering the highlight. Let's try this one. Fade that line into the dark bottom of the olive. And then without going too much, I'm gonna to begin to ease up on my pencil so that it blends 
gently into the highlights. And the highlights I'm not touching. It's working, it's working. Um, I probably drew mine a little bit too small. But. Um, and then the bottom of the third olive, the olive's gotta be darker in the background, but then it fades into a light midtone as well. Uh, you were breaking up, Brendan. You want to try again? The audio didn't work. If those words were intelligible, I couldn't make them out. My question also now is, is the olive attached to the branch? So I'm, I'm looking at the background. There are green leaves that are that are attached to a like kind of like a wooden branch, like a, a light brown stick. And I assume that they're all attached. So I'm not seeing any stems of the olive, like the, 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 the olive itself, but I am seeing the stem and these almost like um, almost like flame like leaves of the olive tree. And I've <clears throat> I have yet to go to Greece. Um, it's definitely on my list. But I would love to pull an olive off. I'd love to eat some like actual fresh Mediterranean olives. So Not can we make the jug with the um, olive oil in it? Yeah, let me drop this down. Yes. Good. Um, so the if you guys are working on that one, you want to break the um i think you want to probably break the 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 jug into i would it's hard to say um i'm gonna say three parts and i'll sketch it over here but i'll have to go small but i'll show you what i mean by three parts so there's the um main uh bottle where all the olive oil you know the main orb or the bubble where the oil is um resting so you find that drop that down <clears throat> you find that orb that makes up the belly of the bottle and then you got to quickly find the center of it by finding the center let me move this down um by finding the center you're then able to place the base evenly on that center. You're able to find the uh, shoulder on that center. You're able to see the vertical that happens on the neck. And then you're able to build the spout. All of those forms work because you have that center line. And then um, I built an oval for the center and you once you put the, I build an oval for the belly. Once I put the center line in, it almost becomes obvious that it's not the same. So this is the left side. Now I need to figure out how I can draw the right side the same. And it's not easy, man, but it's very doable. And what makes it like a thousand times easier is this center line. Yeah, unfortunately I ran out of room on my paper. So I'm gonna add a small abbreviated glass uh, 
it's not even a cork. It's actually just like a, a glass stopper. That's what it is. <clears throat> so you have the handle for the glass stopper and then it is a cone, meaning it's wider at the top and narrower as it enters into like the thin part of the, the neck. <clears throat> Amazing. The belly is gonna come down and be in front of this little base. And then the handle. Um, I went to a glass making studio about a month ago and it was amazing watching them maneuver the glass when it's in its molten phase. They put it in the, you know, in the kiln, gets to a couple thousand degrees, melts. And there's this sweet spot of a temperature where you can really sculpt it effectively. <clears throat> yeah, there's that handle on there. So I got the handle, I got the, the spout. Mr. Got Twist. The neck and shoulder. Yeah, it's getting close. It's getting close to that time. So if you guys got a roll, um, I'll see you next week. Um, yep. But if you guys can stay, <laughs> stay as long as you can. See you, boys. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use, um, just like we made the plate, I'm going to use the ellipse, but that plate, that circle seen from the side. Oh my God, Stacy, we got booted. See you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah, we got people still here. All right, sweet. I'm just going to keep drawing until you guys got to go. <clears throat> or until 2.45 happens. Do you like my drawing? Um, look at that owl, man. Did you make that today or last week? I've made it today and last week. I've been listening and drawing what you're doing mm -hmm. for the weeks, but I, when I'm done, I always start drawing this. So hold, it up. hold it up. These, are, you can take a these are my onions. Yeah, it's so great, man. Declan, like, great stuff. And I love that owl too. That is so developed. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, how many minutes do you think you invested in the owl? Like combined, like, you know, stopping and starting, stopping and starting. Um, probably like around five hours. No way. That's amazing. <clears throat> well, the work is great, man. And I really appreciate all the effort that you're putting in. <clears throat> Liam, can you hear me? Have you been in for a while? I'm out of water. All right. Um, yeah, and the olive oil, the painting, the color of the yellow, this golden, this golden color is just spectacular. And I'm actually the, the shape of the glass really reminds me a lot of the, uh, the garlic. So kind of breaking, even though, uh, even though it's um, glass and um, you know, it's, it's reflective and it's a fluid, it doesn't change the fact that you use your lights and darks um, and you build out the shapes. You know, there's this like dark shoulder here. There's a dark shoulder over here. Like it, there's a little dark collar at the base of the, the neck. Some dark edges. And then there's of course the lightest part, which is just the brightest yellow. I'll try to really protect that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you don't get to see the base very much because of the, the olives are in front of it, but it's all good. And I'm trying to find a way that I can distinguish between the, olive, the, part, the glass that has olive oil versus the glass that um, 
doesn't. It's just um, glass kind of reflecting, um, making reflections of what's in the room that we don't really know about. It'd be easier to draw glass when you can tell what's, you know, when you're in the room and you can actually see what's there. Some really pretty highlights on the handle. Mm -hmm. Edge of the cylinder. <clears throat> nice stopper. Um, I can see this little, I don't even think it's the corner. Maybe there's not even a base. Maybe I confused that little that leaf for the base. It might just be a rounded portion that runs into the, a flat bottom. Who knows? <clears throat> um, last thing I was gonna do um, here, I know it's 245, um, but my leaves really do require light, dark light. Anyway, you gotta roll. I missed your twist. I need a leaf. Okay, yeah, it's, it's 245, it's the end of class. Great to see you um, uh, next week. Bye, Declan. You. See Stacy. I don't know if you can hear me, Stace, but.